In this video, we're going to take a look at first order linear differential equations. We've already spent time dealing with first order differential equations. In this video, we're going to take a look at that special class of first order differential equations, which is the first order linear differential equation. And it has a specific form. The form is dy over dx plus p of x times y is equal to q of x. And keep in mind that this dy over dx could also be written, written as y prime, so either one of those things is the same. p and q are going to be continuous functions of x, and because the coefficient in front of y prime is 1, the equation is in standard form. So this is our standard form first order linear differential equation. Now, as you can see, there are several steps involved. Uh, I'm not going to read over those steps with you because it makes a lot more sense when we actually do this. So I just put them here for your reference. So you'd have a slide that has all of the pertinent information on it, but we're going to move on to our example and do these questions or do the steps together. So for our first example, we have a general solution question. Now notice on the last slide I had six steps. I've only written five of them here, and that's because the sixth step is if you have to find a particular solution, which we'll look at in our next example. In this example, we're just going to focus on finding the general solution, so we can stop at step, step five. Here is our differential equation. And step one says, write it in standard form. So here's standard form, which I've rewritten for you. And as you can see, what I have, dy over dx plus 2 over x times y equals 3x minus 5 is, in fact, already in standard form. So I didn't really have to rewrite it. I just did for fun. Uh, step two is once you have it in standard form, you can easily identify the functions p of x. So p of x is equal to 2 over x. So again, p of x is the one that is being multiplied by y, and that's what's happening here. And q of x. And q of x will be all of this, so 3x minus 5. Step three, determine the integrating factor, which we just call IF, by finding E to the integral of PX DX. So obviously this is the first place we actually have to do a little bit of math. So E to the integral, and then PX, P of X DX, remember, was two over X DX. It might be easier to bring the two to the outside, so one over X DX, Remember that if we integrate 1 over x, we get the natural log of x. And we don't need to write uh, that plus c. Remember the laws of logarithms tell us we can rewrite this as e to the natural log of x squared. And we'll want to do it that way because e to the natural log, remember those are um, inverses of one another and therefore we get to just get rid of e and the natural log, and my result is x squared. So that means my integrating factor is x squared. Now what we're going to do is multiply the entire equation, and when I say the entire equation, I'm talking about the original equation, by the integrating factor. So I'm going to take dy over dx, Oh, that was a horrible y. dy over dx times x squared plus 2 over x times y times x squared equals 3x minus 5, keep it in parentheses, times x squared. Now notice I say and simplify. What's going to happen is on this side of my equation, you will always, always, always get y times the integrating factor, um, the derivative of that. So on the left side of my equation, y is just y, and then my integrating factor is x squared. So on the left side, all the simplification becomes that. So it's nice because I don't actually have to do any math. I just know that that will always be the case. 
On the right side, I'm just going to simplify by distributing the x squared. So that gives me 3x cubed minus 5x squared. So that's all I have to do for simplification. And then I'm going to integrate each side of that. So I'm going to integrate, and on this side, I'm just going to rewrite that as x squared y. So I'm going to integrate x squared y prime, and I'm going to integrate, sorry, that should be dx with respect to x, and then I'm going to integrate 3x cubed minus 5x squared dx. Now, what's going to happen on the left side is I have an integral and I have a derivative. And if you'll recall, integrating and derivatives, those are inverse functions, and therefore it's going to just be x squared y because the integral and the derivative essentially cancel each other out. On the right side, I'm going to integrate, so that would give me 3 x to the fourth over 4 minus 5 x cubed over 3 plus c. And typically we would write this in um, a simpler form, so y equals. So y equals, and again that just means I'm taking everything divided by x squared. So that's going to give me, and you can write it as 3 fourths or 3x squared over 4. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. And then 5x cubed over 3 divided by x squared would give me 5 thirds x. And then you don't have to write the x squared over c. I'm sorry, the x squared beneath the c because, again, dividing by x squared is just going to give me another constant. So this would be my general solution. In this question, we're going to take it just one step further to find the particular solution of the differential equation, and they've given us an initial condition. And I apologize, I had to write so small to try to get everything onto one screen so that we didn't have to keep flipping back and forth. Um, hopefully you can read my handwriting okay. So step one here is to find the differential equation in standard form. So in our last example, we didn't have to do anything. It was already in standard form. As you can see in this case, I've got this x cubed. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything divided by x cubed so that it will be in standard form. So my new standard form equation is dy over dx, which is what I wrote for y prime. The x cubes cancel out plus 2 over x cubed y. And again, we write it like that so that it's very clear that the function p of x is 2 over x cubed. That's why we leave that y on the outside the way that I have. And then equals e to the 1 over x squared divided by x cubed. So that's my new equation. Now I'm going to determine the integrating factor. And to do that, as I did before, I'm going to take e to the integral of p of x dx. So I'm going to write this as 2x to the negative 3. And so I'm integrating 2 and then x to the negative 3 dx. So that's going to give me 2 times and then x to the negative 3 dx, the integral of that is x to the negative 2 over negative 2. And of course, doing some simplification is going to give me e. And then the 2 and the negative 2 will just give me negative 1. So it's going to be negative x to the negative 2. And instead of x to the negative 2, I'm going to write negative and then 1 over x squared. So that is my integrating factor e to the negative 1 over x squared. Now I'm going to multiply everything in the equation, and this is the equation from the standard form equation, by the integrating factor. So I have dy over dx times e to the negative 1 over x squared. And then I have plus 2 over x cubed times y times e to the negative 1 over x squared 
and I have e to the 1 over x squared. I'm actually going to rewrite this right side just to make it a little bit clearer. I'm going to write x to the negative 3 times e to the 1 over x squared and then times e to the negative 1 over x squared. So the reason I did that is because as we can see these two have the same base of e and we know when two values have the same base I can add the exponents so really I'm adding 1 over x squared and negative 1 over x squared which of course would give me 0. So on the right side of my equation I just have x to the negative 3. So my new equation again the left side of the equation is always going to simplify into y times the integrating factor derivative of that product and then on the right side we already talked about the e's canceling out so I just have 1 over x cubed or x to the negative 3 however you prefer to write that so that's my simplification now I'm going to integrate both sides of the equation so if I integrate the derivative we know that that's just going to cancel out those two things are opposites if I integrate x to the negative 3 I am going to get something so on the left side of the equation I of course just have y e to the negative 1 over x squared and on the right side x to the negative 3 just as it was before is x to the negative 2 over negative 2 or 1 over negative 2x squared plus c again I want to get y by itself and so in this case because I'm going to use this same um, idea that we had here what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each side by e to the positive 1 over x squared because the e's will then turn into e to the 0 which is 1. So my new equation is y equals, uh, we'll go ahead and put that e in the front, e to the 1 over x squared times negative one-half x squared plus c and again you can multiply that out if you'd like but you don't have to um, in this question we will take it to that last step which is to find the particular solution so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my equation and instead of y I'm going to plug in e and then I get e to the 1 over x is going to be 1 1 over 1 squared and then negative 1 over 2 times 1 squared plus C so the left side is E the right side is E to the first and then this is negative 1 half plus C so if I divide each side by e that gives me 1 equals negative 1 half plus c add 1 half to each side oops that made it look like division sorry about that I find that c is equal to 3 halves so now my equation is exactly this but I'm just going to replace C with 3 halves. I just kind of ran out of room, but that is now my particular solution. That completes chapter 6 for us. We're going to move on to chapter 7, which has to do with area, and I'm actually splitting section 7.1 into three sections, so area under a curve, between two curves, and then applications of area.